podcasts and look trade week is a, a great time for a lot of speculation but it's almost like a death in the family for you john anderson as a geelong supporter today we wake to the news that uh, alan christensen has requested a trade from geelong your instant reaction uh, i was surprised ralphie i had no inkling of it didn't see it coming as i think most geelong supporters would think he's such a, a vital part of mm -hmm. geelong's list given he's 23 but he's played 65 games just the eight this year, but in those eight games, he showed just how important he was after he came back, back from that back injury and then did it again prior to the finals and missed the two finals. He was a huge part of Geelong losing, particularly the close game against yep. North Melbourne. Let's break it down into a few elements. Firstly, why is he going? Um, people have said to me that Geelong as a city has become toxic to him. Yeah, it's, it's hard to really, you know, put all the stuff that we might know out there, but basically, you know, you have a few relationships, you have things that go right and wrong in Geelong, and it's a small town where those things are constantly brought up again. You constantly see those people in the street. And, you know, so there are, there are a few issues that he's had from a lifestyle perspective that, that as I say, he gets an ugly reminder of continually in Geelong. Yeah. Um, can you add anything to that? Yeah, I think his lifestyle has perhaps been colourful mm -hmm. in, the, in the last six months to a year, he wants to put that behind him. You can understand that. Uh, maybe Geelong see it the same way. I don't know if Geelong's, look, as I said before, Geelong's got an ageing list. So someone like Christensen, who's a, who came into that side in 2011, walked straight into a grand final. and was a key component yeah. of it. He's a really good player, Christensen. He, he kicks goals and he's incredibly brave, as we know. Um, I'm not, look, if Geelong is, as long as Geelong gets the right deal, and I would have thought Geelong would want a player mm -hmm. for him. And what's Christensen, as I said, he's 23. So if he goes to Brisbane or Gold Coast, it has to be someone who's youngish who can seriously play. So and that's and that's the second element. Where does he go? Um, who has got a pick for him? So Gold Coast has picked, yeah. I think, eight and fifteen. Yeah. You think at the moment that Brisbane are going to have to contribute, uh, maybe pick five, and I think maybe twenty five they have for Dane Beam. So it makes it really tough for them to, to do anything. When we first spoke about it, Ralphie, given we sit next to each other, I think my suggestion to you was that. He was about pick 15 to pick 20. Yep. Uh, so pick 15 from the Gold Coast sounds about right. So that is a, would be a, a strong possibility, given yeah. he's ready to go, isn't he? And don't we love the instant uh, feedback from Twitter? I threw that out there without putting your name in. And everyone at Geelong said, hang on, 15's way uh, unders for him. You know, we need pick eight. Uh, I, I think if he didn't have his back issues, I think he, he's absolutely worth eight, as you say. Peak of his powers. Imagine him in that, in that Gold Coast side, just ricocheting, picking great goals. But... <laughs> How much should we worry about the back, given, what, two surgeries now in maybe 12 months? Yeah, I think after the second Geelong, we're confident that he would be fine for next year. So you've got to take them at their word mm -hmm. on that. Uh, I don't think it would be a problem, but then back surgery is unusual. Dawson Simpson's had the same yep. thing, hasn't he? Two, and two and it's fair to say maybe his career is, uh, is at the crossroads from a health perspective. Uh, with the back? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, possibly, but that's not what Geelong's been saying. Okay. They're, they're very confident he'll be able to play good for you again next year yeah. from, from round one. Now, we've got Doug off, uh, off uh, Trade HQ asking us a question. When Geelong lose Varco and Christensen, who should they be chasing? They lost out in Frawley and now losing two midfield players. And, and as a, um, a second question to you there, Ando, should they keep Varco because Christensen is going? Yeah, different types of players, Ralph. Yeah, Travis Varco didn't have a great year. Uh, but he finished the year really strongly. His mm -hmm. last three games were probably his best three games. Travis has been a bit like that as a long play, a bit of a tease yep. at times. Um, plays four or five good games. You think, well, he's, next year will be his year, but he's now 26. And I think if Geelong get the right deal for Travis, it's probably a good time for both parties. And I think they will still go ahead with that, irrespective of Bundy Christians and leaving the club. How, how does it affect their premiership window? And we all were so excited that uh, Mitch Clark might come in. And I feel like if they get Clark up and running, it's the best forward line floating around, but yeah. this is tough. I don't think Geelong could have won a premiership this year, even with Mitch mm -hmm. Clark. Yep. Um, I strongly believe that. But if Nathan Vardy's playing um, and Daniel Menzel, who knows? Uh, but, you know, Christensen takes a lot out of that. He takes a lot of the oomph away mm -hmm. from that. Varco, I, I, yeah, I can sort of see Varco, but uh, no, he does. He listens to the eyes. If I was a bookmaker, I'd be wanting the cats out half a point after that news. Do you like the three-way trade that could potentially see, and just bear with me, um, Varco getting to Collingwood, uh, Mitch Clark going to Geelong and Heredia Lumumba going to, to Melbourne. That, that's absolutely in the works. And if that doesn't happen, we'll probably see, I think, pick 33 from Geelong go for Mitch Clark. But but what do you think of that three-way trade the, for, from a Collingwood perspective? The best player of those three potentially is Mitch Clark. Yep. But he's probably done it for a year and a half in his career. Yeah. Uh, Lumumba's the best player over a period of time by a fair way. And I think he gets undersold as a player uh, because of his speech-like status in the mm -hmm. game and yes. what, he, what he might want to be. Yeah, uh, figure. Yeah, mm -hmm. Travis Farco. Well, he, he was a key component in a premiership for Geelong in 2011. Yep. 
he was so good in that game. But uh, kicks the first goal, uh, streams out of the centre, kicks yep. that beautiful linking goal, gets it at half back, gets it yes. a couple of times. Kick three I don't need to game. remind you, Ando. No, I? no, no, he kicked three for the game and he had 21 disposals. Yeah, there you go, yeah. And score uh, involvements, tackles, anything you can. 2009 Ralphie when Chappie kicked that great yeah. goal. Who handballed to him? Of course he did. Trevi Vago. He, he's a good guy, Trevi Vago. He's well loved at Geelong. Yeah. Um, one thing it may, Geelong would be conscious of, you've got such an exciting prospect in Stephen Motlock. Now, part of that is to have that Indigenous culture within mm -hmm. a club. Uh, Varco and Christensen going, you, you lose a degree yeah. of that. And that, that a bit can, of spark. Yeah, that can be a problem, as well as the players feeling really comfortable in that environment. Yep. Uh, Brad Hartman's still there. Uh, still but, waiting for a contract, to be honest, and say, so, again, in ruthless business, this will help him yep. in his situation. I would think it would with Brad Hartman. Mm. Uh, he's a different type of player than those two. He doesn't have the... The brilliance. He's a very hard working. Player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, um, uh, the Gold Coast has officially counted itself out of the race for Dane Beams today. Yeah. Now, probably because all of a sudden it's interested, uh, we know, in in, um, in, in Alan Christensen. Mm -hmm. um, is Brisbane a sure thing for the Gold Coast, for, for other, for Dane Beams? Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, yeah. and Brisbane think they'll get him with their first pick. Mm -hmm. um, and probably they may have to offer that later pick. Yeah, pick 25. Pick 25, yeah. yeah. And I think. They feel confident about that. Obviously, Collingwood wants a player. Yep. Collingwood won a lot of players. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, yep. they're right in that's there. That's okay. That's all right. They're getting yep. aggressive because they know that they need to appeal to the fan base. Now, a lot of rumours going around yesterday that, that basically Collingwood was saying, having already set this 5pm Friday deadline to get things done, we're just saying, okay, if you're not interested in giving us anything more, we'll just sell him to the market. We'll sell him to GWS. We'll sell him to whoever he's interested. I spoke to Steve Silvani about that, Steve Silvani, and he said, uh, you know, of course, everyone's interested in Dane Beams. He said, mate, he's still on a plane ride from Brisbane you know, to here. He says it doesn't help him to get closer to um, to his old man. Adam Trelaw is a name that's been thrown around. He was adamant. They've always been adamant that they won't trade him. So I like Collingwood's tactics, just needling Brisbane a little bit. And yeah. as you say, if they gave up 5-25 and 25 for uh, an amazing player in Dane Beams, as a Brisbane supporter, he wouldn't be upset. No, given Dane Beams is going to bring in that maturity in mm -hmm. the, that they need. I mean, yep. you had him to... Rockcliffe, you had him to Redden. Um, yeah, Brisbane, I like the way Brisbane's going about it. They, they've mm -hmm. really improved, haven't they? Yep. I mean, what we saw as a basket case eight months ago, they've got a touch of Port Adelaide's about them. Yeah. And with a really impressive coach, um, he, he Justin Lippich this year never seemed phased at any stage. Mm -hmm. He lose by 100 points. He was exactly the same next week when they yeah. won a shot yeah. game by 20 points. Might so have a laugh and a joke and, oh, well, yeah, you know, I'll just rerun yes, last week's press conference. It's... Um, Oh, I mean, I think we all believe that Greg Swan got the flick over at Cartman. We all felt that was unfair. Um, you know, he might not be amazing on the really small stuff. He's like Rocket mm -hmm. He's not great in the paperwork, but he gets into a club and he makes things happen. And he's yeah. made this Dame's, Dane Beam situation happen. And I think we all feel like there's probably more to come at Brisbane. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a triumph for Swanee. He, look, he didn't want to leave Carlton. Yep. Um, but he knew that his time was up from the board. Someone mm -hmm. on the board wanted, them, wanted to move him on. Uh, I think it's probably been a good thing for Swatty because he seems rejuvenated now. Mm -hmm. He's got this new challenge. He's got the backing of the AFL, which he didn't necessarily have yeah. at Carlton. The AFL will do what it takes to help Brisbane. Mm. Um, and that's what Port Adelaide, the situation they found themselves in two years ago, makes a massive difference. And uh, I think he's really enjoying it. Yeah. He's, he's up for it. And... Um, He's a real go-to man, Swanee, because he and he likes the meat. He talks to us. Yeah, so, so yeah. He's one of those good guys. Now, Matt, of course, uh, asks us. Uh, Collingwood must be happy with picks five and twenty-five for for beams. Pick twenty-five then goes to North for Greenwood, which satisfies the pies. Yep. Get it done so other trades can start happening. I, I agree with that. If you're yep. a Collingwood fan and you got um, Greenwood, effectively got Greenwood in, um, and uh, you lost beams, but you got pick twenty, uh, pick five. So five and Greenwood for beams. That's okay. Yep. No, that sounds fine. As long as you use fine yep. five properly, mm. which is always the query. Yep. Um, but at five, they're going to get... Depends what they're looking for, I suppose. I would have thought they'd be going for a tall. And who's who's in that? It, like Sam Durden, a few of those players. And you wouldn't get McCartan by that stage. I don't think you'd get... Well, Brace Shaw, we're thinking Melbourne would pick two. Mm -hmm. think Petrarca would pick one. Yep. We're thinking McCartan would pick three. So, look, it'll come down to Durden or Ryan at yep. pick four. Mm -hmm. I think Durden, I know Carlton are really keen on Durden. Durden yep. can play both ends. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a really nice mover. Yep. Uh, not perhaps as big as, not as strongly built as McCartan and not nearly as tall as right. But uh, they'll get a good player out of it. And I think they'd have to go tall because mm -hmm. Travis Cloak's getting towards the latter stage yes. of his career. Yep. Uh, Still ben, paying him a lot of money, obviously. Ben Reid, injury queries. Yep. Um, Jesse White didn't work out this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still Brown. hold out hope that he can play really good football for them, but it didn't happen this year. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I look. He, You've got the he, slows he, on him, man. He's, no, he's, best, face he's best is good. But how mm. often have we seen his best, Jesse White? 15, yeah. 15 games? Oh, we saw it in about, yeah, 
10 or 12 games for Sydney that last yeah, year. Yeah, they, they sold him at the top of the market and Collingwood paid a good price for him. Yeah, I look, I hope you're right. I like he's, athletically, he's a wonderful yep. player, but um, he just can't put it together often enough, Ralphie. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, uh, no, I'm not, not a massive Jesse yeah. fan, but that's, that's pretty unfair. Now, you've uh, got close ties at Carlton. Um, get tomorrow's Herald Sun. You've got some great insights into Carlton next year going forward. But um, Adam Cooney. He's about to turn 30. He's been linked with that club. We've written a lot of times in the last few weeks in the Herald Sun that you know that he's on the market. Yep. Um, Carlton fans are upset because they say that we're already rebuilding. I like the fact that you can get an experienced player in who wouldn't cost you much and he might help the kids come through. What, what do you think? Yeah, they'll go, look, if they had a choice between young and old, they'll go young. Yeah. Um, Stephen Trigg's really strong on that. Uh, we're not rebuilding. He's strong on that okay, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, he it's another be, message. There's a lot of messages out there and some would say that. Uh, he's really strong on the fact we're not rebuilding. And when you rebuild you get rid of seniority around the place yep. so i guess jared wade you could say that was the case but jared wade chose to go they wanted mm-hmm. to keep jared wade um i, I actually think Cooney would be a really good pickup for that yep. um Cooney wants a challenge Cooney at the brownlow medal this is a, a story i'll share with you ralph and our viewers here he actually made the comment to someone after matt prittis one of them, he said well now matt prittis is a really really great player he said people will say that i'm not one of the I'm one of those worst players to win the Brownlow. Mm-hmm. He said, maybe they'll put Matty up with me there. You know, like <laughs> that sort of thing. I mean, Shane won't worry. He wasn't, Sorry, he, exactly. He wasn't trying to put Matt Fittis yeah, out at all. Yeah. But I, I think he's doing himself a disservice. Because mm-hmm. I reckon Adam Cooney at his best is an absolute jet of a player. Yeah. And look, he had some some poor games, but he had some amazing games as well. And if they lost yeah. him and they got a you know a, a yeah. second round pick or a third round pick or, or swap second round picks, I like that. Um, John Feeney says, surely Carlton need to be rebuilding and not go after the likes of Tut, Jones, etc. They must trade for picks rather than those at VFL at best yeah. players. How old are Tut and Jones? Jones is 23. Tut's staying oh, vintage. Young players. But would you about Jones? Uh, yeah, he's got limitations. But you know what? He's got upside. And that's yep. what you need to do. Yeah. Bring players in. And if you give up pick 43 for him and he kicks you 25 goals in a forward line with Levi Casbolt, with Henderson, who will be yep. fit and, and really battled valiantly despite what that osteitis pubis. Yes. I don't mind that as the as the building box for a forward no, line. They brought in Doherty last year mm-hmm. um, and they brought in Everett last year. Yep. They were younger players. They're really encouraged by those two because they're really good forward. Yep. In fact, Doherty will be a good player. He will. He just... He's decision making at times. He, just, he, just he got to, Mark Murphy can cuss with that short pass. Yeah, he for the did, he did, yeah. But, but he can get the ball, okay? Yeah, he can. What about Daisy Thomas as well? We're off track a little bit, but what what, what do we expect for him in his second year? He was tenth in the best and fairest, albeit yeah. you know um, came back from a really uh, significant injury. Yeah, I think there's more pressure on Daisy than most players in the competition. Yep. He's been paid a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's gone there not just for what he can bring on the field, but also leadership for his vibrancy because he's that type of person. Yep. They didn't see enough of that this year. Mm-hmm. And that's because he was trying to establish himself as a player. Yeah. Wasn't able to because his body would let him do the things. If he can regain the explosion, and we saw uh, a great player in Luke Ball never really regain that yeah. explosion. Yep. That's what Daisy needs. Now, I think his body's pretty good, Ralphie. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be carrying him off. Yeah, now I don't mind this suggestion from Jez. We've talked about this a little bit. Um, O'Rourke to the Hawks for 19, 19 yep. 21, and Jash to the Blues for 7 and 28. And so that would basically mean that Hawks, the Hawks get their man, they're going to have to yep. give up a first round pick. So the Blues give up pick seven, but they get Jashed and they get potentially like a 19 and a 21. Jax is, to me, uh, what I've been told, a fanatical Carlton supporter. Really? Not just someone mm-hmm. who's, you know, he's like our mate Big L, the Derek's for Richmond, who yeah, yeah. the show. Just yep. a, a total fanatic. Mm-hmm. And to the point where it would actually affect where he went to. Half a nutter, do you think? Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Go like Al, yes. Not like me, or Al's for yeah. full, full nutter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about, what about the fact that we don't really know if he's any good? Like, I've written a couple of stories about uh, John O'Rourke. Yep. If he jumped out of my bowl of porridge, I wouldn't know what he was like, what kind of player he is. He's played nine games out of two years. We know he's a former pick two. So and just, did you know whether Dom Tyson was any good? No, uh, yes. I, I'd seen some of his okay? games late in that last year yep. where he'd racked up big totals. Yes. And, and I thought to myself, at least he can get the ball. But he's actually a, a taller player, so yeah. it's harder to tell. It's a, I know people at Carlton have got that query. We'd love to get him, but mm. is he any good? Yeah. We don't know. Um, 195 so centimetre, and you know what? Yep. He's a swingman, Ando. Oh, swing Once man, you're a swingman, swing swing you can play forward and back. So, yeah, again, you get a bloke in, and he's got an upside. Realistically, how many blokes play forward and back in the competition? No, not too many. Jared Waite can play forward and back. Um, Levi Greenwood can play forward and ruck. Uh, Matthew Cruiser, he can do something, I'm not sure. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a few of them, Henderson, as well. Um, before we um, just get swapped out, Ando, because yep. we've got uh, limited interchange here. Oh, Jeff, the, heavy, the heavies are coming in. I believe so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff Garlett to Melbourne. I like this. Uh, good pickup for Melbourne. Yeah. Good player, Jeff Garlett. He and lied so, to Mick, though. I mean, he, he can't he lie did. to Mick. Yeah, he don't lie to Mick, but it, Uncle Mick doesn't like people who, who tell mm-hmm. him. But 
So last year was, or this year was a disaster. Yep. Three years before that, did he kick 40 goals or more every year? Uh, he kicked it, 49 yeah. in 2011, he kicked uh, 43 in 2013. So he might have had a, a, a 30 ish in 2012. Pretty handy player. Oh. I mean, that's, not many players can mm. do that. Mm. Uh, he's, he's really talented. I think Paul Ruse will be good for him too. I think so, he's uh, a yeah, good pick up for them. Someone, uh, I said to someone the other day, how good a player is Luke Bruce? And this is a Hawthorne connected player. And they said that someone out there, it might have been, uh, I won't say it, initial yep. Sam Mitchell said, oh, he'd be offside a lot if you played soccer. And so the, the perception was that as much as he runs hard defensively, he's the first one forward. Yep. Jeff Garlett's got a bit of that. Yeah. But that's okay. Melbourne need a few downhill skiers. As long as they can run fast enough to go both ways. Exactly. And he yeah. runs faster than most. Yep. Uh, no, I, I don't mind that at all. I think he's a good pick up for them. Yeah, and again, he won't cost much. Sam Frost will get to the club. Uh, Heredia Lumumba, the prince, will get to the club. Um, <laughs> you know, they'll probably take picks one and two. So I, I think that they're building slowly. Maybe they're not going to get the avalanche of Dom Tyson-esque players in that Ruzi wanted in his second last year, but I like that. When they have their season's launch, if is part of Heredia Lumumba's contract and he actually gets to speak, deliver a speech... Um, at the season's launch. You know what? As stupid as it sounds, I think yes. Because I reckon their issue with Collingwood was he was almost gagged after the dramas of late 2013. And so then it sort of built up in him and just pent up inside and all those thoughts about being the prince and the chosen one, which of course is his name. You know, he, he took on his father's name and his father's very important to him. So as much as we have fun, Harry's coming from the right place. But if they let him talk every couple of months about the Dalai Lama and about, look, homophobia and racism and yep. inclusiveness and all the things that are actually really important, yeah, that that'd be good because we know what happened to Collingwood when he didn't talk and it all exploded. So how's Sir Hubert Buxton Tuxton, who's, you know, mm -hmm. aristocracy, uh, the MCC members, yes. how does he get his head around what he really is talking about? I he wouldn't care as long as he can play. I, I don't know. I paid my MCC fees a, a month late, yeah. so I've actually had to apply again. So if you're out there listening to me, MCC, <laughs> can you reinstate me? I'd be very happy. So uh, get rid of me. don't get rid want to get the high boys up and running. Uh, uh, anything else out there? We're probably going to do some substitutions uh, in a second here. We've got the, the A team coming in now. We just hold up an end. And um, Any updates on Paddy Ryder trade to Port? Um, I still think that that deal will get done. I know that there's some um, contingency plans out there for, for his camp to try and force uh, Port Adelaide's hand. But Quick look, one for you, Ralph. Yep. If Port Adelaide had Paddy this year, hypothetical, do they win the flag? Uh, in retrospect, yeah. At the yep. start of the year, you wouldn't have said that they're ready. But, yeah, no, no, no doubt. I think they're – I mean, would you call them the premiership favourite? That's exactly what they need. They a player like him. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're the premiership favourite for sure. And now Sammy, Sammy Landsberger is about to roll in. He's looking very excited as well. Come on in, Sammy. It's got some news for us. Yeah, I'll, move I'll swap in. You move aside, and then I'll okay. get Mickey Warner. It's sort of like the ABC commentary position, <laughs> except that we're actually on the webcast. So, see you, Ando. Love your insights. You, and I'm joined by the trade expert. Don't worry about Sam Toomey or Emma Quayle or any of those guys, sort of guys. Sam Lansberger, welcome to Trade HQ. Thank you, Ralphie. What do you got for us? Oh, donuts. No, <laughs> no, no. I hate that question whenever you're on radio. What you got one to finish with? And you say, no, not really. Um, and what do you think? Now, you're uh, you're close in there at Melbourne. You, you yeah. said in the Herald Sun yesterday that you think that Melbourne will probably keep picks two and yeah. three. Is it the right decision? I think it's framing that way. It's not, it's not sort of born out of uh, it's their wish. It's the yep. fact that they don't reckon they can get a big fish. There's not mm -hmm. one out, of, out, out there at the moment. They'd love to package two and three out for a danger field. Yeah. Adelaide's emphatic. It's not going to happen. There's not much moving elsewhere. People so, are throwing up Carlisle, but again, I don't think Essendon would do yeah. that. So I think Melbourne's thinking now is, well, if we're not going to get the, the big fish we want, let's just take two and three to the draft yeah. and get two good young kids. Uh, they've got a coach in place now in Goodwin for the next five years. So they've got a, a set mm -hmm. co coaching structure. Yeah. So, Georgie Stone development, you know, that they've got the development yeah. program. And there's, you know, the top end of the draft, it's pretty even, but they reckon there's a couple of good kids in there which they can uh, yep. pick up. I think Angus Brayshaw's one, which mm -hmm. they'll heavily consider a pick two. He's a bit of a combative beast. He's an inside midfielder, you know, clearance specialist, uh, really good background, Mark Brayshaw's son, Jim's uh, Jim's yep. nephew. So um, he's one they'll look at. They mm -hmm. might get another key forward as well. So mm -hmm. that's Ando's trying to get his glasses here. This is the, the benefits <laughs> of live webcams as well. So, um, yeah, sorry. And they'll probably also get Sam Frost and the yep. Giants. So oh, that'll, oh, yeah. that'll help replace Frawley. Um, um, I don't think they'll go after Daniel Merritt anymore. I think he's on a pretty rich contract, yep. so he might be a little bit too expensive. So, so what happens at Brisbane for all of the positives if they lose uh, um, Merritt? And as you say, that there are some obstacles there. And they also lose Patfold to GWS. I mean, we're raving about their, their midfield, but yeah. that'd be a big blow to the back line. And they still don't have much up for up front either. No. So obviously, you know, they lose John O'Brien. Um, yeah. They've got a couple of kids, like they like Daniel McStay and Darcy Gardner. Mm -hmm. but and yeah, John O'Freeman looked good late. The, yeah. You know, potentially the Collingwood father, something who they overlooked. In the short term, though, there's no doubt they're going to be pretty thin yep. on both ends of the ground. So that's obviously a concern. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see if they target anyone else or 
how they try and fill those key posts because that's yeah the, the midfield is rich with talent but yeah they definitely do need a bit of support now if you're carlton or the western bulldogs and you can't get a deal done or maybe uh well no colin would have picked five what do you do? Who are some of those players in there? I just asked about, you know, the Sam Durdens. We don't know a lot about picks five to eight. You're, yeah. you're a man. Uh, which club are you after? I mean, it's really, it's it's quite even. There's obviously a lot of tools. It looks like Sam Durden and Peter Wright, they'll talk that further in the year as maybe, you know, top three, top five picks. Mm-hmm. They might slip out a little bit. Yep. Um, so they might be a couple of big blokes um, up for the... So you think the Peter Wright's potentially to get to five or eight? I think he could for sure. Yep. I think, you know, if, if we map it out now, we think Petrarca won, probably yep. if the Giants have that pick. It just say it's Brayshaw and McCartan, two and three. Um, if Collingwood has pick... Well, so we always felt like St Kilda would trade yeah. pick one for four and then they'd be able to get Peter Wright at pick four and that would still help them with their forward needs. But if they get Jacks, does that you know does that dampen the need for a yeah. Peter Wright? I'm not sure. They got Billy Longrin last year. So yep. it really is a fascinating scenario. There's no doubt Peter Wright could slip out of the top five. Yeah, um, and that, again, if they get Memory and Jacks, exactly. and we know they've got a couple of Ruckman there um, you know, in Longer and Hickey, yep. they've got some tools, haven't they? And, of course, we know they've also got um, uh, number 16 for St Kilda. Um I'll get back to him. That's the beauty of the web chat. You can sort of stuff it up. And <laughs> just apologise to Roll all those through. people out there. And his name, of course, is Reece Stanley. Yes. Yeah, and, and again, he's sort of, you know, will he make it, will he not? But yep. it's another option there. So they're, they're pretty blessed for, for key position stocks at the minute. How deep is this draft? You know, we heard picks uh, one to eight are great. And then we heard, look, picks that to 15 are okay. And the club said to me, he's got a late teens pick the other day. Oh, no. Pop 20 are good. <laughs> How much do you think, speaking to the people who matter in this industry? I think it's pretty even across the top 15. So I'm not sure how, how deep it shift a couple of days ago. Yeah. And so 12 picks locked away through Academy picks of Father Sons. He reckons there'll probably be maybe another 60 or so live picks on draft night. And then you promote a rookies on top of that. So I think it, it will go pretty deep this year. We'll see a fair bit. You know, I reckon we'll see fourth rounders getting picked up. Uh, amazing story by you on Ahmed Saad, and Ahmed told us about the trials of the last 18 months. Where's Ahmed Saad at? Oh, which is really exciting. Um, he, he probably thought he's mad. We thought that maybe it might not come to a, bit, a little bit. There's a few. There's a little bit. Of really good, Nick. Um, and the Saints are obviously, you know, in constant dialogue. I think the Saints have set him a few parameters. And if you can tick that, against him up back there next well, year. Where is he at with being able to train with them? The, the, the speculation yeah. was obviously he couldn't train until um, later in next preseason. But the, maybe the Asada or the wider rules are changed. Yeah, yeah. So he's been in, I think, off the top on February 23. So mm-hmm. he wasn't meant to be able to start training until then. But if the AFL adopts new WADA legislation coming in, which we expect they will, that that means that a suspended athlete can start training two months before his okay. suspension ends. Yep. However, that legislation would come in January 1, which would mean Asada can st- uh, sorry Ahmed can start training from January 1, which yep. is pretty good. So if he's drafted, if he's rookie or drafted in the November, start of December, he's only spending four weeks by himself a couple of those weeks of the Christmas break anyway, and then he's back at the AFL club January 1, so that's good news for Armin. Now, Essendon, of course, are in a situation where Jason Windelick is adamant that he won't come back. Uh, um, uh, Hard- Hardingham. Hardingham. Kyle Hardingham yeah, Kavanagh, has said he wants out today. Elliot Kavanagh, I spoke yeah. to Elliot's manager again today, and he's desperate, and Jay Clark, of course, wrote that in the Herald Sun. Uh, how worried are we? I mean, it just seems oh, like yeah. everyone's just chipping away at the edges. Well, every day it's a new player, so yeah. how long can this go on for? Mm. Um, it, it's going to be fascinating how it unfolds. Forget possible suspensions. They might have no players left to suspend. Like, there's a lot really on the cusp of walking out. And you'd think that it's just going to be a domino effect. I mean, if, you, if you're an Essendon player and four of your mates have decided to walk out in the past few days, yep. where does that leave you? Yep. Um, the uncertainty hang over the coaching situation is clearly perilous. And yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see how the next 10 days unfold. Because if Essendon loses another four or five players, mm-hmm. it, it really is, you know, it's alarm bells. Well, having a look at their draft picks also uh, mm. the, the, today, they'll have pick 17, which they'll get for um, Paddy Ryder. It, you know, it might be something fractionally different, but around there. Yeah. I've got pick 21, of course, which is the, the one pick in the first two drafts, which the AFL and big uh, Mike Fitzpatrick gave them. And then they've got something like 53 and 71. <laughs> not great, So if it? they're losing players past that, or well, 71, 
clubs start you know, opting out by then. So you might have 71, 73, 4, 5, 6, 7. You know, we haven't seen clubs take multiple picks down that no. deep since Carlton with the bad old days of, uh, of the, the dramas of 2001. Yeah, it's fascinating. We, you know, Adrian Dodora spoke last week about how they're exploring other ways to to get talent in. They signed an Irish kid last mm-hmm. week, Conor McKenna, but yep. you know that's not really going to cut it at the moment. So they're going to have to be really creative. Johnny not Rayner, only, maybe our yeah. um, stable <laughs> chase eight hundred meter champion. I mean, it's it's not only this year. And the the flow on effect is going to it's going to sting them for the next two, three, four, five years. So they're going to have to be really creative to get talent in yeah. in other in other mechanisms to to avoid a gap in the list. Otherwise, you know. The, the effects of the 2012 saga is just going to roll on and on and on. So it's going to mm. be fascinating how they play it. Well, people wanted to come to Western, and even Paul Chapman was willing to come to Western this year, and we know yeah. Brandon got up before the scandal broke. You will see players like that that just won't be prepared to go to Western. And that's, and that's sad for the fans of Essendon. You know, do we feel enormously sorry for Essendon itself? Mm. Maybe they brought some of this upon themselves. But you're, if, if you're a punter in the street with number five on your back or whatever it might be, you know, that's, that's tough. I saw a kid kicking the footy the other day with his old man and he had an Essendon jumper on an Essendon um, footy and he just thought to himself, you know, that's the kid that's being affected so much. And the, the players, yes, the administrators know, you know, Hurdy will still be a rich person afterwards. But I feel for those kids out there who are getting taunted at school and they've done it for two years. And the other part is Garlett's picked Melbourne, yep. Essendon showed interest. Mm-hmm. Memories picked St Kilda, Essendon showed interest. Yep. Uh, that's not a great sign in itself. And you won't know that they might mm-hmm. enter the, the frame for Kristen Jacks. Is yeah, that a yeah. realistic possibility, do you think? Oh, no, they're desperate. Uh, I confirmed that with GWS and also yep. with uh, his manager. And at this stage, uh, he's not interested. He wants to go to Carlton. St Kilda's got picks. Uh, what has Essendon really got to give up? Yeah, potentially pick 17, but... Um, 17 fair odds for Christian Jacks, who was picked Thunders, at 12. Yeah. So, you know, do you want to give up you know, a, a player just for a key forward there when you're going to lose Elliot Kavanagh? Um, you've done the Elliot Kavanagh scenario. What, he's played seven games in three years. Yeah. And as I say, Clarkie told us he wants out. Um, What's he worth? <laughs> I don't know. I don't Second, know. Second, third round. I mean, he hasn't yeah. really... So I, how good was he? My point, my point is, how good yeah. was he as a, as a junior? Well, it was fascinating. I remember at the start of that year, the Giants had the top three picks. They ended yep. up with the top five through the mini-draft. But for the first six months of that year, um, there was a lot of talk that Elliot Kavanagh might be one of those first three picks. Yeah. He, he slipped down a bit, a little bit. He had hamstring problems. And there's a few uh, circumstances which, which went on near the draft which allowed him to get to Essendon mm-hmm. and pick 19. They were through hey, with the result. We're talking to our viewers and readers and listeners here. Fess up, what were they? Well, there might have been a little bit of, in- of instigation from the Kavanagh camp to ensure he got to Western. He I might see. have been trying mm-hmm. to put another couple of clubs off. That's the, oh, I uh, like it. That's the innuendo out mm-hmm. there. Um, mm-hmm. You can judge that for Sammy yourself. brings his stuff to us, though. He doesn't just sort of, you know... Tweeted out there, he gives it to you. But he got to the bombers at pick nineteen, mm-hmm. and they were thrilled. So, and look, let's be honest, he's disappointed since. Yep. I mean, he, he hasn't shown as much promise as, as we would have hoped. His value has no doubt slipped, and if he walks in now, Essendon's definitely going to get unders for a kid which they rated extremely highly. So, that's a concern as well. You look at Gold Coast, and we're doing a bit of a fly around of some of these clubs. You know, they probably get Alan Christensen in. We talked about it, maybe pick eight or pick fifteen. They definitely will get uh, Nick Malcheski in. Three year deal worth about five hundred. They're going to be a sight to behold if they're fit and firing with uh, Nichols, the Ruckman, and Zach Smith mm. up after a knee. They're going to be scary good. Absolutely, and especially who knows what coach you're going to get. But if they got a bomber in, for example, um, you know, this side could sort the ladder in top four next year. There's yep. no doubt about that. I think Al's pointing to a couple of uh, Twitter questions. Have we got one? Well, it says that the reports there that Tom Lonigan has been offered a three-year deal at the Bulldogs. Yeah. I spoke to his manager 10 minutes ago, and he didn't know anything about that, no. so we're not quite sure where that is. What, what do you think? Oh, I can't say that happening. I did hear a, a little bit of whisper of that last week, but it didn't seem to be anything materialistic in it. Um, I'd be really surprised if that eventuated. But there's no doubt the dogs are on the record saying that they want care defenders. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why not? Well, why not merit? As you say, it is expensive, but i got money to spend. Mm, yeah, I agree. And why not spend it? Like, they've just lost Sean Egan mm-hmm. to freed up a fair bit of uh, space in the cap. If Adam Cooney goes, it's obviously going to create more space. Um, and the Dogs have said they want to be aggressive, and they need key defenders. So, um, yeah, merit would be a fantastic option from my point of view. And he can he play might, forward yeah. as well. Yep, and he might be a three-year option. And he's not going to win a flag no. them because they won't win a flag in three years. But I reckon clubs are just saying to themselves, we need to be competitive. We want to push towards the finals. And if him playing there gives um, Roughhead a chance to be a better player or Easton Wood or any of those mm. young kids, I don't mind that. And they're going to lose Morris probably at the end of next year. So it just shows mm-hmm. them up for another couple of years as well. Yep. 
Um, now, yeah, obviously- yeah, our last one, is memory getting interest from anyone other than the Saints? I think he's picked the Saints. I think that deal is almost done. Yeah, you'd think so. And I think we were sort of saying the other day, a little bit of irony, in fact, that the Saints had picked 46 a couple of years ago. Mm. Trailed it for Trent Dennis Lane on the Swan Jews, pick 46 on memory. So, yeah. swings and roundabouts, he'll get there in the end. But, yeah, you'd expect that deal to get done pretty soon, I reckon. That's, a, that's it from us today at Trade HQ. We'll be all over Twitter and, of course, the Herald Sun and Super Footy website. So, keep up to date with all those vehicles and all those platforms. Uh, I'm John Ralph and been joined by Sammy Landsberger and, of course, before him, John Anderson. See you soon. Cheers.